10 years ago, if you would have told me just how different women are from men, I would not have believed you. It was only through a few bad experiences and of course a few hundred YouTube videos that finally opened my eyes to the harsh reality of gender differences. So recently I asked myself this question, if I had to go back in time to my 18 year old self, so 10 years ago, if I could only tell myself five things about women, what would it be? Now I wanna put my young naive self in the best position possible. So what I'm gonna say is not only the things that will help me attract more women, but also keep the woman I want within my life. Starting off with number one, you either must be her first or be her best. This goes deeper into actually getting a woman attached and how you can actually retain a woman long term. Have you guys ever been in those relationships or even those flings to where it just feels like there's no chemistry, kind of feels stale, it feels boring? I guarantee you, a little bit might be her fault, but it's probably your fault too. And that comes down, like I said, you're either not her first and you're definitely not her best. Now, in terms of what this actually means, let's break it down. The reason why it's a good thing to be a woman's first is because the first guy sets an imprint on her. You ever been with a woman to where you know, she tends to prefer a certain guy in terms of physicality or even behavioral characteristics. That's because of her imprint. So that's the first guy she either fell in love with, the first guy she had sex with, the first guy that took her to this certain place. You can be the first for a lot of things, but the point is you need to set that imprint on her if you want her to not only be attached to you long term, but also remember you long term. I know for a fact there are some girls out there that will never forget me. And that's because I was their first, not necessarily from a sexual standpoint, but in other aspects. So the girl you're talking to right now or your girlfriend right now, an easy way to actually implement this is try new places, go to things that she's never tried before, things that you never tried before, go on experiences you both have never done before. And when this adds up over time and over time, then that's how you actually get women more attached to you. Now let's talk about the next one and that is being her best. Now on paper, it might be hard to actually tangibly see who's better than who, because you'll never know the past guy she's dealt with. All you really have to go based upon is what she's saying to you. Is she letting you know outwardly, like you're the best guy I've ever been with? Do you have an idea of her exes and the other guy she's been with? And are you like kind of out of their league, so to speak? I know me personally, for example, especially when I was younger, like 23, 24, I've already built a multi six figure business. I had my own apartment. I had two cars, so I was doing very well for myself. But I was dating these college girls, these 22, 21, who are still dating around the frat boy with three roommates and Miller lights in his refrigerator, right? So whenever they came to my place or dealt with me for a long period of time, it was made to me very clearly that I may not be their first, but I'm definitely their best overall. Ideally, you wanna be both though. So if you can do both, that's gonna be a thousand times better. But to the least, at least do one. Be her best or be her first. Now, let me tell you guys a story. This has happened countless of times, but I was on a date with a girl. We were at the bar in the restaurant. And as we're having conversation, she starts talking about her past and how she hasn't been on a lot of dates. And in some cases, uh, other girls have told me I'm the first guy they've met off a dating app or met off Instagram and how they haven't had sex in like over a year, how they're celibate, et cetera, et cetera. I, I can't tell you how many of these stories I have heard consistently and ongoingly. Now, 10 years ago, if I would have heard something like that, I would have believed it for face value. But now knowing how women are, I know that women are purity dealers. They are meant to sell you purity. That is their game. Now, in some cases, this can be true, but in most cases, it is actually not. Because think about it, especially if a woman outwardly says this stuff without you even asking, like you're not having a conversation about it, she just goes out her way to tell you like, hey, I've been celibate, or hey, I haven't gone out on a date in like two years, or whatever the case may be. I never believe it. You know why? Because almost every single time it's been a lie. And the reason why I figure out it is a lie is because as I'm starting to date her, as I'm actually getting to know her, we get more honest with each other throughout time. And then they start telling me more stories and then I'm adding those stories to what they told me in the past. And then time and time again, I come to find out like, hey, <laughs> you were not celibate throughout this whole entire time. You were actually seeing that guy and also going out on dates. So I say this as saying, not for you to not trust women, but overall to just watch their words and look more at their actions. If a woman who goes to a lot of parties, if a woman who drinks a lot of alcohol, if a woman who is on every single dating app and you've seen her on every single dating app, if she tells you like, hey, I'm celibate or she's trying to deal you purity, 
just outwardly say, you know, okay, sounds good, cool, cool, play it off, but like in your head, no. Like, hey, she's telling me this because this is game. Because if you actually knew what she was doing, if you actually knew that she wasn't quote unquote pure, then women know that potentially you may not take them seriously. And especially if you're like a high value guy, you got your style on point, your money on point, your looks on point, women really do not wanna mess it up with you. So they'll go out their way to lie just about anything and everything about their past. Number three, she won't respect you unless you respect yourself first. My whole dating strategy is based upon respect. I have a lot of loopholes, a lot of hoops that women have to jump through before they even go out on a date with me. And especially if I want to keep them within my life. Like there are certain things that a girl has to do and has to do without me telling her. Now the reason why I do this is to not only attract high interest women in my life, but also it sets a boundary for respect. Because if you don't know, respect comes before love now to a woman they value love right they want to be validated they want to be reassured they want to be loved but for us men respect holds a heavier weight than love itself if you're a man looking for love then you should absolutely stop and just look for respect first and that comes with respecting yourself first so another big example is how sometimes a woman might flake on a date and a guy will go out of his way to still pursue that woman you know, these are little things that just overall shows that you don't respect yourself. And for that reason, women aren't gonna respect you back. Another way to respect yourself is to, once again, set boundaries and always be willing to walk away. That's a man's biggest power, is just simply the ability to fully walk away and not need to have that woman specifically within his life. And once you build that abundance mindset and once you actually start respecting yourself on all fronts, you're gonna notice that love is gonna come actually a lot easier for you. Are you tired of getting on dating apps and not getting the results that you want? Or does your Instagram look like a 2013 archive? If so, then listen up. Every man wants to be high value, but nobody is willing to put in the work or they're just overwhelmed with all the information they have out there. This is exactly why I created my Digital Romeo Mentorship. This is a 12 week mentorship where I take you through the exact processes that I use for myself to level up my dating life, online image and status. Not only are you gonna learn how to make yourself more attractive, but I'll teach you how to represent that in an online image so that you can then leverage for more dating and financial success. I'll also show you how to build a social status so that you can network better online. At the same time, building out your dating funnel so that you attract women on autopilot. If you let me guide you, I promise you, you'll have no choice but to succeed. We don't work with everybody, but you may be a good fit. If so, click the link down below this video for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation. Hope to speak to you you soon back to the video now speaking about myself 10 years ago when i was 18 years old i always thought relationships were 50 50. i thought you know it's emotional support equal exchange value driven just solely 50 50 that's the way relationships work and in some cases they can work that way depending on the dynamic but one big thing that guys need to realize and this is something that i would definitely tell myself is that women are not your therapist or problem solvers. Listen, my current life right now, the things I deal with, with business and managing this and taking out this fire, there's no way I can go to a woman and explain these things to her for a logical sound response. No. And so for you guys going to your woman, explaining your problems, your issues, the things you gotta deal with, how you're so stressed, like women aren't built to problem solve. Women aren't built to sort of, you know, handle or help you out in these situations. Sure, you can get some emotional support, you know, get a back rub, get a head pat. But after a while, we all know that this will actually eventually lose attraction if you do it too much and too often. So with that being said, I have learned to deal with my problems internally or with that outward group. This could be other friends, this can be other mentors, this can even be sometimes students within my own personal group. Because if you guys don't know my coaching system, I have like a, a big group of guys. So we explain these problems to each other on an ongoing basis, right? And that's the importance of a man having a support group overall and not just relying and going to your woman for everything. And honestly, I don't even talk about money. I, I don't talk about anything personal or private with a woman I, that I'm dealing with. No, everything's just fun and exciting. You know, every now and then, of course, you have your disagreements or arguments, but anything when it comes to business or your own personal life, unless it's like super serious, 
to the point of like suicidal sort of thoughts or tendencies, then I would keep all that stuff to yourself. This also sets the right dynamic of that leader to follower sort of dynamic, right? And I believe every relationship works best whenever the man is leading, has the control, has a stoicism. And the woman, she can be emotional all she wants, right? You can handle her problems. You know, us men tend to even handle women's problems a bit logically. But the point is, you wanna keep that dynamic and you're gonna ruin that dynamic if you come to her as if she's like your therapist or your, your problem solver. Avoid that completely. Now, one of the last things I would tell myself is that women's behavior changes through age. I have seen a tangible, clear difference of how women are acting now at my age of 28 versus when I was 23, 24. Because the way dating apps work is that as you get older, they still match and pair you usually with women your age or a few years younger. So when I was 22, 23 on Tinder and dating apps, I was getting, once again, with the college girls, 19 year olds, 18 year olds, things like that. But now I'm consistently matching with like 27, 28 year olds. And I've noticed that these women that are in the late 20s specifically, they are on the biological clock, my friend. Like they are dating with a purpose, they are serious. Some of them already have kids. So overall, I've noticed that their expectations are a little higher versus a younger girls. And that makes sense, right? And what I came to realize is that within each year of a woman's life, something changes a little bit and is basically catering to her biological clock of you know having a family, having kids, because women instinctively know that, hey, if I don't find a man by the time I'm 28 or 29, it's gonna be increasingly more difficult for me to follow my timeline that my body has for me, you know, having kids at 32, 33, or whatever their goal is, right? Now, in some cases, they'll act totally different depending on their age, but for the most part, for the majority of women, you know, that early time frame of their 20, 21, 22, they're having fun, they're partying, they're not taking you serious whatsoever, right? Every now and then you come across a good girl, but for the most part, girls just wanna have fun. Now, in the mid 20s, they're more open to having a little something more serious, but it kind of depends on the girl. But like I said, the late 20s, early 30s is a whole different ball game, man. Honestly, I believe the best age to date a woman will be anywhere between 23 and 25. 24 is like the sweet spot. You know, any older, it's like a lot of trauma, a lot of experience, which can be a negative thing, a lot of expectations, you know, but when they're too young too, like 19, 20, they're kind of dumb, like they don't know what they want. They're just having fun, you know, it's just not something that as a 28 year old man that I would want to deal with long term. So I found like the mid 20s to be perfectly, but just know and understand the woman's going to act totally different depending on her current age right now. And that's something that I wish I would have known. Now, one thing I also wish I knew is the fact that you can actually attract women without even opening your mouth. In fact, in this video, I did a whole breakdown on it and how you can do the same. So be sure to watch that one next.